Hello guys, my name is Lars from the Survival Russia channel. I'm the donor of the slugs that we're gonna watch Jeff and Charles Fledermaus work with today. Yeah, this slug here, I call it the Sputnik because it looks a lot like the Sputnik satellite the Soviets sent into orbit around Earth in uh, 1957. It has a reputation of being unstable and tumble and uh, ricocheting and so on. So uh, let's see what uh, Jeff from Charles Fledermaus has to say about that. Chances are you've never seen this slug before, much less seen it shot. This is a Soviet-era shotgun slug, probably at least 40 years old. Since there's so little information about these on the internet, we're simply going to call these the Sputnik slugs. You better believe it, buddy. These slugs were smuggled out of Russia by Lars, who has a channel called Survival Russia. Actually, he just mailed them to us. I do hope you'll take the time to check out his channel, and maybe even subscribe. I certainly appreciate the time, effort, and expense for him to send these slugs to us. Okay, let's take a closer look at this mysterious slug. It's solid lead with an attached plastic power piston on it. Now on that plastic power piston are some numbers that will give us some clues that maybe how old this slug really is. Now the K12 indicates it's 12 gauge, the 11K is 11 kopecks. So the cost of this slug was 11 kopecks or 11 cents, because uh, 100 kopecks equals a ruble, right? The other Russian slug that we've shot, called the Poliva slug, was 25 kopecks. We know this slug was made in the early 1980s. So using those prices, we can kind of get an idea just how old the slug is. It could be from the 60s or maybe even the 70s. Now you can tell by looking at these, that these have been kicking around for quite some time. Lots of dings, dents, and scratches all over them. Plus the plastic power pistons are kind of dried out and brittle. Therefore when I loaded these up I had to install a new power piston behind them just so that they would work. And how much do these weigh? Let's find out. They weigh in at 33 grams which is about 1 and 16th ounce so they're kind of a hefty load. I'm Matt. I'm out here with Jeff today. We're going to be shooting these Russian slugs, these Russian Sputnik slugs. Our first target today is Boris and he's wearing a level 3A Kevlar soft body armor panel. And behind the Kevlar we're going to put this brand new CD in wrapper to show you how much force your body is subjected to when you get hit with a slug wearing a vest. Okay, anytime you're ready. <laughs> X marks the spot and Matt had no problem landing this thing right on target. This was shot at about 25 yards away and the velocity is about 1250 feet per second. And look at all that debris from the CD. Now very often when we get a mystery slug like this, something that we know very little about, um, almost immediately we'll start getting comments from viewers in Russia or Europe explaining exactly what these things are. So if you know what these things are and know the history of them, hey, let us know. And one of the things I'm curious about is what the purpose of these slugs were. Are they for the military? Are they for hunting? What are they for? Now the slug was still stuck to this Kevlar vest and look at that expansion. It just obviously uses a very soft probably pure lead. No added metals like antimony to make it harder and it really did mushroom out very well. Now Natasha is in horror as she's looking at that damage to that new t-shirt. That's how much force is still hitting you in the chest. That CD is just gone. Okay, next we have some Russian pickles. No, that's, that's Korean. You gotta be careful, people on the internet don't understand when you're joking. Oh, okay. yeah, they never understand <laughs> that. <laughs> Why'd it come towards us? Uh, 
Half the fun for us is finding interesting targets to shoot at, such as this can of large sweet pickles. It's about a gallon of pickles, and the Hydra Shock from all that sweet sticky juice that's in there is pretty impressive. Just really rip that can apart. Now you'll notice on this shot, he hit it a little bit low. He was, of course, aiming for the center of the can. Matt is a naturally gifted shooter. He's a very good shot, and I was kind of surprised that he didn't hit it in the center. So let's look a little bit closer here. And as you can see, the slug appears to be diving down a little bit. Let's bring out the line of truth. It doesn't lie. And you can see that the slug actually starts diving down. And that, of course, isn't just from gravity because it's about a two inch deviation. So it could have been those uh, dents or dings on the slug. It could have been a number of things, but I think it's fair to say that we can't blame the shooter for this one. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> a little warm, but they're pretty good. <laughs> one of these days we'll hit this sucker in the center and really show what Hydroshock does to a steel can like that. Still, very impressive. Next we'll shoot the 5 pound VAT-19 gummy bear. Thing shot off to the left, see it? And here. Rip that thing open. A little bit to the left. Okay, let's see if we can blame the shooter on this one. <laughs> um, I'm glad he hit the gummy bear. We only had four of these, no practice shots or anything like that. So trying to figure out where these things flew and you know how much they dropped and all that was just kind of a learning experience. But obviously the slug clipped the left side of the gummy bear and then it hit the water jug and then it went shooting off to the left, ended up landing in the pond there. And once again we'll bring out the line of truth and you can see a, a little bit of deviation there, not as radical as with the shot on the pickles though. So maybe Matt was just a little traumatized from hearing that AR-15 bazooka being shot. Seven inch lead disc, about a one and a quarter inches thick. Very heavy, 20 pounds. Go ahead. <laughs> now, these slugs are not spin stabilized. We weren't shooting through either a rifle barrel, rifle choke, or even through any choke. And Kapuya, he hit that sucker right in the center. Finally got it, huh? So let's see if we can give the shooter his due credit or if it was just luck. Bring out the line of truth. Now we saw a little bit of oscillation there, not much. Uh, the slugs still, they don't tumble through the air, they fly nice and straight, and he got it right this time. You better believe it, buddy. I don't think you get any more accurate than that. No? With, without, with no sights. No, that was good. It's like shooting a musket. Very deep. There's the back. Jeez. Usually it bonds to it, it'll, it'll weld itself mm -hmm. to it, but it's, that's pretty weird. Turn that right inside out. I don't, that was the, like the rivet on the back. It just stretched everything out. Finally, we have a test shot from some slugs from Italy by my friend Emiliano. If you're watching this, Emiliano, Please explain what's going on. Why was that tumbling? Just a reminder to check out Survival Russia. Thank you Lars for providing these and thank you guys for watching this video.